Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I'm super excited today to get to listen to one of my favorite bass singers cover one of my favorite blues songs. And we're not just going to hear bass, we're going to hear tons of vocal layering, one of my other absolute favorite things. And this is all going to be performed by the incredible Jeff Castellucci. So let's get to it. She's gone, and this house just ain't no home. Anytime she goes away. <sighs> this gives me giggles immediately, and I had to hold them back <laughs> because the moment he started humming and having the layers, and then the bass came in that much lower sound as well. It's just so thrilling to me to hear a voice interweave with itself in such an incredible way. It gives me rumbles and delight at the same time. I'm gonna go back to the beginning. Ah, it's also beautifully mixed and produced. Oh, okay, anyhow. <laughs> Gotta mention right right away at the beginning, the way he goes, does a little scoop into it, mm, essentially. That kind of scoop gives it a slightly more down-home feel to me, which is starting to set it apart as his own cover right away. <sighs> oh, I like the blues. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go back again in here. Uh, the second time he does this little melody, he doubles it an octave higher. And I love the way that in both voices, they do a little slide up, a bluesy slide up. And they're very well synced together when they do that too. That kind of thing, I think, is more difficult to sync with yourself in a recording studio than it is to sync with another person live. You can really feel and watch the other person live and get lots of extra cues about how to time things together. But when you're in a recording studio um, with just that loop back of how you maybe did it one time, then it can be hard to get that exactly together, but it's really nicely timed here. Let's just go back to the beginning one more time. Let's see that note. Oh man, that's an A1. Oh, it's so low and so delightful. Okay, so what happened in this intro? Yes, one more time from the beginning, we're gonna do it. Notice that he starts in a more middly place for Jeff, it's still really pretty low. So he starts there and then adds a layer that's above in the melody and then drops that really low rumble down beneath. It's a nice way to build us up. She's gone, and this house just ain't no home. Anytime she goes away. I want to talk about his vocal production there. Jeff has specifically said that he doesn't tend to open his mouth quite a bit, and I think that's important for people to notice. 
uh, often when you go higher, you'll see the mouths open up a little bit more. There are acoustic and functional reasons for this. But when he's staying down low, he's keeping it um, relaxed for sure, not clenching in the jaw whatsoever. Um, but he is keeping it a little more closed and there's definitely space for his enunciation to still be happening in the mouth. So it's not closed off so much that we lose any diction. However, partly because it is a little more closed, we're more likely to get a bit of that twang in the sound where there's a little more soft palate drops. We can get just, again, a little bit of down home feeling going on. I wanna go back to this moment when he starts singing solo, right as that's happening, there's also a, a really cool whoosh, like a, a rise, I think it, it might be a backwards rise in there that's happening. And it sets up um, a way, it sounds like the sound suddenly gets cut off, so we get drawn into his solo moment. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. That's cool. Really cool production. I like it. It's not warm when she's away. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone And this house just ain't no home Anytime she goes away Wow, wow, he's, ah, the way he echoed that, it made it sound to me like maybe he's dropping into subharmonics there or right as it drops down again after any time you have to drop into subharmonics. But I have to tell you, Jeff is really, really incredible at controlling his lows. This is one of the reasons I'm just in awe of him as another singer and, and watching and listening to what he does. He can sing a low note just with his true vocal folds. It's much lower than most people can go. A subharmonic note requires for false vocal folds to get involved, and then you're able to actually drop it down an extra octave at that point. But it is two different mechanisms that are happening at the same time. Um, it can feel quite different inside. But he's been able to alter the tone quality and match when it's just his true vocal folds versus using subharmonics so well and disguise it so well. I just, I'm in awe, really truly in awe of what he does. One more time, right back here. Goes away. It's double too. She goes away. I wonder this time where she's gone. I wonder if she's gonna stay. This is, this is one of the most creative covers I've heard Jeff do. <laughs> it's really exciting how he's playing around in different registers in different octaves. Right? Uh, the way he drops it several octaves and then pops up to this really high part all of a sudden is extremely exciting. I know that's all his voice. And that is not normal, people. That is not normal whatsoever. That's totally extraordinary. I need to go back quite a ways because it feels like it's just so hard to stop this because he keeps giving me more ear candy. <laughs> she goes away. Whoa. That is so delightful. And I feel that the... The way he's used production here to really cut the sound off on at, at any time, that is very appropriate. It's not overproduced. It gives me 
um, you know, it, it has cut the sound off, but it gives a really cool effect that still feels really organic to me, uh, which is really, uh, <laughs> really awesome. <laughs> Wow. I got a shout out to Ed Boyer here. I know he helped with some of the mixing. Um, the way that these voices have been mixed to draw my attention, sometimes back, um, sometimes it feels really full and almost all surrounding, sometimes it feels very centered. The way that he's mixed Jeff's voices. I'm guessing Jeff did some of the mixing first too. He's uh, very good at production as well. Um, it really gives me incredible clarity to Jeff's voice. When you have one voice that has made tons of layers like this, it can be really easy to lose clarity in which layer is where because a person naturally blends well with themselves. The way that this has been produced and where those voices have been placed gives me a lot more clarity in where those parts are and I'm able to pick out more things happening at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> the yak cracks me up. <laughs> I wonder this time where she's gone. Uh, the yeah cracks me up. I, I, it's hard to even listen because it's so funny at that point. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna go lower. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, it's really delightful. The way that we get that static in, making it more vintagey, I think is perhaps a bit of an ode to Bill Withers, who originally wrote this song. Uh, it's sort of fascinating. Uh, Bill Withers wrote this song, but it's not about a woman. It's not about uh, the sunshine being gone. And when she's gone, I would think that she was about a woman. I went for years thinking that. Um, but Bill Withers specifically said, I was watching a movie called Days of Wine and Roses with Lee Remick and Jack Lemmon. They were both alcoholics who were alternately weak and strong. It's like going back for seconds on rat poison. Sometimes you miss things that weren't particularly good for you. That completely changed the way that I think about this song, <laughs> Ain't No Sunshine, when she's, meaning alcohol or maybe seconds on rat poison, gone. Whoa. Very different. So we get that vintagey feel and the way we get the crackles at this point. Oh, no, oh, no. I wonder this time where she's gone. I wonder if she's gone to stay. She's always gone too long. Anytime she goes away. So amazing all the little ways that he's dropping in sounds and taking out other sounds so that we get drawn suddenly into a little piece of ear candy. It's happening everywhere. Brilliantly, brilliantly arranged. That top, his top is sounding like, ah, it just keeps blowing my mind. Every time I hear him, I think that his voice is expanded in, in many more ways and he already was blowing my mind. I, he obviously is consistently working on these sounds. It's really cool. His top is really gathered. It almost sounds like a tenor's top, and he's not a tenor. <laughs> oh. And then that drop into, I think that was some harmonics there. Oh, oh, the giggles. Oh, the goodness. Okay, one more time. Oh, I know. This is, this is so much, but it's so good. <laughs> She goes away. Wow. Anytime. I know, I know, I 
know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I It's so much fun to hear how he's playing with these I knows. In the original, that's one of my favorite things too, is the way that Bill Withers plays with I know, I know, I know. And by the way, uh, I think Michael Jackson covered this and it won a Grammy in 1972 for best R&B. <laughs> Whoa, cool. It's a really good song. I knows though, he's having, he's just having tons of fun with them. There's, I like the way he's given so much variety too. It's constantly moving and shifting and being really fun. It, it percolates the ears, right? One more time from here. Oh, I know, I know. I know, 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 I know. Oh, you ought to leave a young thing alone, but ain't no sunshine when she's gone. The blend there for where he goes to a more focused solo sound to that thicker, uh, more layered vocal sound is really incredible too. Oh, I know, oh, you ought to leave a young thing alone, but ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Only darkness every day. Okay, we're gonna go back a little bit because there was a really interesting, he added um, a more electronic element in here. Only darkness every day. Right there, there's a really fun electronic element that's been added. Uh-oh, I'm gonna sneeze. I'm, I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. Ah, excuse me if I sneeze in a bit. Um, that electronic element that doubles down that is pregnancy rhinitis, everybody. That is means that I'm vaguely allergic to being pregnant. It's a thing. It's like 70% of women have it, so excuse me. But anyhow, he does a really cool uh, doubling, essentially, within the production, which I think is fascinating. All the darkness every day. I have a lot of people ask me if... I like hearing electronic sounds bring, being brought into voice. And I I do. I really find it fascinating how people use um, some of the software we have to modulate voices and create different sounds out of it. Voice instantly uh, goes to us. It, it, it tugs at us emotionally. Uh, we're actually biologically inclined. Our ears have developed to respond more to the human voice and other sounds. So having a voice and being able to maybe give it some electronic modulation can be very interesting as far as how to bring some more emotion into a song without necessarily having a full vocal line. So some groups will go way off the deep end and do crazy things, really electronically modifying a voice. Having a little bit in here, I think is intriguing and interesting. And I'm curious though, what all of you all are gonna think, because I know there are some purists out there that say, oh, I don't like it when I hear any sort of any extra electronic edge to things. I think though, that this is fascinating and it adds yet another element of ear candy that makes me wanna listen deeper. Every day. Yeah. Whoa, no sunshine when she's gone. And this house just ain't no home. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad he brought back that pause between again, because that that moment was really delightful to me. When he slides down and it almost feels like his voice just goes off of a cliff, 
That's really exciting. He did that with a yeah and then brought it back here again. Real, uh, yeah, very exciting. Right there. <laughs> Just goes into fry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back. I think this is approaching the end. Just want to appreciate this one more time because he did the humming at the beginning and almost sort of took us on rewind as he got to this end. We got that moment of the blips on at eh, eh, any time. And then we also have um, the hums and a feeling of more closure. It really, it's a cool way to essentially wrap the song up and tie it with a ribbon. This is my new favorite Jeff song. And I have to shout out to the team that put it together. Jeff does a ton of it on his own, but his wife, Kathy, is also an excellent production manager. And I know that Patty Cake Studios helped with some filming and Ed Boyer, oh my goodness, what a fantastic mix. Really incredible. I loved the ear candy throughout. I'm gonna go back and listen to it many, many times. If you aren't subscribed to his channel, you should definitely go check it out. He releases tons of amazing music. And he's just also a really, really cool guy. If you want to see some more videos featuring Jeff and some analysis of that, check out this playlist over here, and I hope I see you again soon.